Welcome to Scrum Down. This is your one-stop shop for all matters rugby. Anything happening in terms of rugby in the region, this is where you find all the action. I'm joined by Jotham and Joni, of course, I need no introduction whatsoever. And you're looking at Sevens Rugby. Now, over the weekend, we had Driftwood Rugby action at the Mombasa Sports Club. And uh, wow, I mean, it, it was just amazing to see all the teams that are there. We had a few upsets changing in uh, form uh, on the table. And, uh, you know, we might have some surprises in the coming uh, uh, last two tournaments. But uh, in case you miss all the action, this this is what went down at Mombasa Sports Club for the Driftwood Sevens. The main match of the day was on card and they might have had the last laugh during the Dalla and Kabeberi Sevens but come Driftwood KCB were forced to eat the humble pie after homeboys ended up schooling them on this circuit. Homeboys gave their opponents a run for their money from the onset, but KCB broke the deadlock through Jacobo G. Homeboys put even more pressure on KCB, and eventually it was Leonard Mugazi who scored a try after a great move from Alvin Atieno. Mike Wanjala converted to give Homeboys a 7-5 lead. KCB then changed their mode of play and Ken Mosetti wasted no time in putting his team ahead with a great try and a conversion to give KCB a 12-7 lead. Heading into halftime, homeboys did not back down and Agostino Lugonzo changed the results on the scoreboard to 14-12 in their favor. Come the second half, KCB were dealt a major blow after Ken Mossetti was injured leaving a major void that homeboys capitalized on. Homeboys pushed their opponents to the edge that saw Mike Wanjala scoring under the posts. Augustin Lugonzo then converted for 21-12 lead. Fabian Orlando pulled one back for KCB in the last minute of the game but it did little to change the result. And in the port city of Mombasa, homeboys emerged the winners of this year's prestigious Driftwood Trophy. So that is the action that went down in Mombasa at the Mombasa Sports Club at the Driftwood Sevens. That was the third leg of the National Seven circuit. And uh, we had some uh, new teams coming up, uh, some teams going down, and of course the phone book was changing. Jotham, of course, is uh, uh, very disappointed that uh, one of the teams he said last <laughs> week was going to finish last. Actually surprised I, I, I deny completely. I don't remember saying he's a thing. That, that was Mwamba. I, I think, Johnny, just to start off, yes. uh, which, ones, which teams do you think were actually the surprise team of the Driftwood Sevens? Well, I think, uh, let's go by seeding. Uh, the only two teams that upset the seeding going into uh, the Driftwoods, uh, and that was Mwamba and Cabras. Uh, Cabras beating Impala, yes. um, which meant Impala dropped down to the bowl. Mm -hmm. I think most guys are written off Mwamba expecting them to do another bowl showing. Uh, we, beat, um, we beat Western Bulls and beat um, the other team that we beat was Black Blood. Black Blood. Yes. And went all the way to the same is losing narrowly to KCB. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, the mental uh, inclusion of some of the seven players in training um, more so Humphrey Kayangi just to kind of challenge the players on their mental yes. was a very big difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, also just the players wanted it more. I think they were tired of the ridicule, tired of, uh, of being uh, uh, made fun of. Yes. <laughs> and and they just, just, just wanted, wanted more. They just wanted to have a better showing. Mm -hmm. And um, all that uh, teamwork came to be one good showing in the, at the end of. That, that, that meant that Mwamba climbed up three spots to take a position seven on the standings. Uh, the standings, of course, we've got KCB at the top with 63 points. And then they're followed uh, very closely by uh, Homeboys. Homeboys, who actually won the Driftwood Sevens. Uh, I mean, they, they, they looked as if they wanted it more than KCB. Well, I think Homeboys came ready to take it home. I think they, I mean, uh, Kabeberi, they, were, they lost to Kenya Harlequins. I think uh, Kenya Harlequins got off the mark first. That probably delayed them a bit. Uh, take it down to, uh, to Dallas Sevens. They were building up momentum. And I think uh, this past weekend they really proved that they, they, I mean, apart from KCB, if there's any other team that probably deserves it, will probably stands a high chance of taking home is Homeboys. I mean, yeah. if you look at the end of it all, at the end of the weekend, they produced the most valuable player, mm -hmm. uh, top point scorer, and top try, and scorer. Top try scorer yeah. too, also. Mm -hmm. All yeah. three from Homeboys. So deservedly I think, so. Deservedly so. Now, just a question to you guys. Um, we, we had one week break. Uh, from uh, the first two tournaments. Yep. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, we saw some teams bringing in new players into the fray. 
uh, I mean, can the Harlequins, uh, they're including some new players. Do you think that that contributed a bit to their drop because they lost uh, their position to uh, Nakura FC? Um, uh, for me, I would say the break, again, a big advantage more to the, the teams that were lagging behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Had a chance to catch up. Uh, when you have a team that has been winning with a certain strategy and doing it consistently, uh, they, would want l they would want less time, uh, less than around between tournaments because then teams can have time to, to readjust, to readjust and study them. Uh -huh. And so that, I think, worked against KCB in that regard because you start uh, from Dala, uh, where they were beating teams with 30 score margins and things like that. I mean, yeah, they beat, yeah. beat uh, Nondis 26, mm -hmm. I think 26-7, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, in the quarterfinal of the game, it was a 7-0 uh, break. Now, Nondis uh, revamped their squad. Yeah. Uh, it worked for them. Mm -hmm. Now you have other teams uh, who revamped their squad that didn't work for them. I think it's a it's it's a it's a matter of managing those who are coming in. Uh, what are they going to add? Are they going to maintain the same psyche that's already in the squad, yes. or are they going to be complacent because of their the stature their stature in the, in the yes. game mm -hmm. and not give as much as somebody who has a lot more to prove would? And so I think those are the dynamics that were at play there. Okay, let's just talk about, uh, I mean, what, what is at stake right now? Because we have KCB at the top with 63 points. And then, of course, uh, homeboys are coming in second. Uh, I mean, they already have the morale, having won the Drift Sevens, and maybe that might be the thing that takes them to the next level. And then, of course, we have Nakura FC, who are actually are great movers. Biggest mover. They're biggest movers because they were actually fifth, and now they're third. Third, yeah. At the expense of uh, Kenny Kenny Harlequin and Stratmore, Stratmore. who are coming fourth and fifth, respectively, but tied in points. And they're after Impala. I mean, that bowl final thing didn't do them any favors because they dropped to position six. And then, of course, uh, Mohamed at position seven, and then Nondi at position eight, and so on. So, uh, in, in terms of the poolings and the seedings for the next uh, tournament at Prince Louis Nakuru, do we have a, a pool of death? I don't think we really do. I don't. I don't think we have a pool of death actually. And I think, as as uh, as was mentioned, the the break was just enough time to have. I mean, all the teams uh, get into the mode uh, psychologically and also yeah. physically. I mean, pool A we have uh, we have Impala, uh, we have Cabras, we have Mombasa, and we have Homeboys coming in. And then that pool alone, Impala fine, bowl bowl uh, bowl final. But they were playing well. They were playing well. Yeah. So and I think and I think this this weekend was just probably a bump. You can't yeah. really write off any yeah. team right yeah. now. So I think uh, moving into uh, Prince Loop. Pool A, homeboy is definitely a lot of team to look out for. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have gained momentum from this past leg. And I think if you look at the other pools, I think the same still stands. You can, you can definitely pick out one or two teams, even yeah. three teams mm -hmm. in most cases, if you look at Pool D, where only, I think, uh, the Daystar is probably the only non-club within the yeah, pool. Yeah. I mean, you have... Now, you, can, so, uh, just, uh, you mentioned my initial of a non-club, just as you wind up. Uh, we have uh, Masaku, who are in pool in pool uh, in pool B? Pool B. And uh, by by virtue of winning Division Two, they got promoted. Yeah. Up. Yes. Where is me machine? <laughs> very very <laughs> um, good question. Just to relate that, just to tell uh, even the question you're asking about me machine. For me, I'll tell you, pool A to pool D are all pool of death. Uh, it comes down to who makes the least uh, uh, errors. Yeah. Of course, there are other teams that have. Uh, more players with X factor across the board than others, but at the end of the day, it comes down to this: uh, Are you ment uh, mentally prepared for every game as they come along? Yeah. Are you in a right playing set of mind to minimize your errors because people will punish for errors? If uh, the quarterfinal KCB versus Nondis had KCB made an error, uh, that was it. That was it. Yeah. Would have been as maybe they would have gone to sudden death. Yeah. There were there were close calls when uh, Nondis would have scored, mm -hmm. and I think Nondis just didn't have that final kick to put the tries in. Uh, uh, probably credit to KSB for holding it out there. Yeah. Um, machine, quality side, taken down to Division 2. Yeah. You would expect them to bounce back immediately. Mm -hmm. They still got a reprieve by not... Uh, they were supposed to play Division 2, but because of uh, uh, Egerton not showing up, yes. they, well, they, they, they were given a reprieve. They, they fought to stay in the Division 1. Actually, one you, shield, I Yes, we, we would expect machine to be back. But that what happens? That's not the case. That that's, not not the, the case. That, that's not the case. So there's there's no easy. They, you can't say there's a clear cut easy game. You have to play each and every game with the seriousness that it deserves because uh, most uh, it's not like before where tactics and and patterns of play were hidden to. Uh, a few to, select clubs. To, yeah, we're just uh, a preserve of a few select clubs. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the patterns. I mean, it's, uh, Kenya Sevens has grown in... in, in Leaps uh, and bounds. Yeah. And, and, and that is actually the, the quality of rugby we are going to be seeing this weekend. Now, we turn down to N Nakuru RFC. That is uh, the club that is going to host the Prince Louis Sevens. So all roads are leading to Nax Vegas for the fourth leg of the National Sevens circuit. And this is a close one because 
Um, uh, the mathematics that we have it is that if KCB win Prince Lou, then they are crowned uh, champions. But uh, if uh, Homeboys win Prince Lou, then it will be left it will be left to the last tournament. That is, Chris Seven to decide who takes it home. Now, in the unlikely event that neither KCB nor Homeboys make it to the quarterfinals of the Prince Lou Sevens, then we see a place where Nakuru, uh, Strathmore, or Ken Harlequins actually have a chance of uh, uh, gaining the points. But that's a very unlikely scenario. Order. But as we said, you never write off any team, and only time will tell. I'll remind you once again: you can engage us on Twitter at Scrum on Rugby. You're also on Facebook, Scrum We love to hear all your comments about the show, anything that you want to see, and of course, if you've got anything to share with us don't hesitate to do that now we are focusing on a player philip wamai uh, of course a player who has got a national seven side call up uh, he's been very big for his club and uh, this guy i mean he's 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 a quick thinking quick winger he's quick Kenya Sevens international Philip Wamai, or commonly known by his nickname Odiero, is a key player in KCB. He started out his rugby back in school and says it was never an easy ride. The love of game started in Poman, way back in Nairobi school. That's when I was introduced to the game of rugby. And apparently it's been it's been it's been one hell of a road, you know, as it's been it's been a tough journey, but at, at the end of the day it's all about the love of the game and the passion about it. It's all about waking up in the morning and thanking God for the talent that He's given you and asking for the energy and the strength to see that day during the training session and all. Defending champions KCB have had a good streak this season, winning the Dallas Sevens and the Kabeberi Sevens. And Philip's take on why they win is really quite simple. Uh, I believe it's all about teamwork. It's all about the brotherhood. It's all about, it's all about working together. It's all about, it's never, about, it's never about any one particular individual, but it's all about the teamwork, it's all about the team and everyone working together, bringing their individual brilliance to be part of the team. The player who featured in the Kenya Sevens team at the George Sevens in the 2011-2012 season says it has not been all smooth sailing and injuries have dogged him down on certain occasions. This, this past season, uh, it's been really, really tough for me because I've been in and out because of injury. Uh, the last, uh, the one that really got me out is when I got a shoulder injury was by all the way back in Dubai last year in November. Uh, I was playing for the national team and apparently I got injured on the shoulder, which put me out for majorly, entirely like half of the season. Philip Wamai is a modern forward who provides options to the team in both defence and attack. Because he's a good defender, particularly after working his way into the squad after his injury, many say he's the playmaker this season and the response to this is quite subtle. For the last tournament that I played, yes, because uh, I just collected a few moves here and there and decided to show the boys and I told them, Let's do this on stage. His pride for the team, though, is undying, and Philip Wamai will remain a key player to look out for, and in simplicity, he says, teamwork is key. It's never about one guy, and I know the person who's next to me, and the person on my left and the person on my right got my back. That one is mandatory. So when I play the shot for Case B, I'm, I'm really, really on it on another level, yes. Philip Omai, and it would be very interesting to see how he's going to be standing alongside Andrew Amonde this weekend at the Prince Louis Sevens. I mean, he's been uh, very influential to, uh, I mean, to KCB's uh, success thus far. Yeah. A very big player. Yes, and yes. I, I mean, uh, Philip Omai is somebody who has what a lot of players would, would have or would want to have. I mean, a dreams, his dream started at Club Rugby. Uh, winning Kenya Cup in his first season, straight from school. And uh, he's also part of the glory team that w uh, did three Kenya Cup titles back to back. So I think uh, that has impacted a lot in his mental to be a winner yes. in everything that he does. A uh, few players, <laughs> this is one thing that also caught my eye, a few players get to be selected to go at the, to the national team as a forward. And then... Uh, when at national level you're told you're going to play scrub off, uh, <laughs> and yes, he saw that yeah. he, he, and he still adapts to he it, he adapted to it and, 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 and did a good job out of it. So, um, I think he's a very good uh, addition to the national service uh, setup. It has, he has been a bit unlucky not to get um, uh, a, a lot of game time, yes, but uh, during a Paul Truce era, but through injury and a few things here. But I think uh, he should be uh, back to for a better run. Philip Omai standing tall for KCB, and it would be very interesting to see how these two players, uh, together with Andrew Monde, blend to bring the success and glory to KCB. Definitely hope yeah. that it's going to happen for them this weekend at uh, Prince Louis Sevens. 
Uh, I mean, Andrew Monday is, is, is big, but he might have had some issues in the final game against home. Eh? He struggled a bit. He struggled a bit. Eh? Uh, well, I think uh, uh, having come up, come back from Commonwealth, and then just getting in, uh, hitting the ground running, I think it's a totally different ball game at at, at uh, you know at local level. Yes, at the local People level. People want to always uh, <laughs> prove that uh, you're not better than them, and yes. I think there are a few times in there. Where he <laughs> you basically have a target on his back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. But he he, he represented himself well. Yeah. I think uh, Monday is a is a national leader and. Uh, he can hold his own. So. Uh, national leader and of course in, uh, in the days to come and the years to come we definitely hope that he's going to be one of the rugby legends we'll be talking about on Scrum Down. Now speaking about matters rugby legends, we move on to legends. Uh, after the break we are going to be focusing on a player who played for the national 15 side when he was still in form 3. Uh, he's, 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 he's big hearted. Uh, not very many people know about him because his brother tends to take all the glory because he's a loud mouth. But uh, Manuel Okoth is one player that everybody needs to be looking out for. Just remind you once again, you can engage us on Twitter at Scrum Down Rugby, also on Facebook, Scrum Down. We'd love to hear your views about the show. The current director of Mwamba Rugby Club, Manuel Okoth, has over two and a half decades been a key player of rugby. He started off his club rugby career at the age of only 18. That was the year 1985 when I joined Mwamba. 85, 86, so a very good years for Mwamba also. Because I believe that's the time we won the Enterprise Cup. And from there on, I became a regular member. And I enjoyed rugby up to the time I retired in 2005. He has played alongside many great names such as Tomo Cage, Michael Otieno, the current director of Kenya Rugby Union, Joseph Wako, the late Tom Onyango, also known as Tile, just to mention but a few. And under his belt, he holds a number of titles that was not an easy ride. My career in rugby, I was very fortunate to play for the national team. But first, I had to climb through the ranks by playing for chairmans, we used to have divisional sides or provisional sides. Can I call it provisional sides? Chairmans, Scorpions. Then there was Kenya B, where I made my debut in 1991. I had my first cup in 1993, 92, for Kenya. And I believe that was uh, the year I think we toured Zimbabwe. A very rough match we had. It was a very rough tour in Zimbabwe. I think I had about six cups because then we didn't have many, we didn't have much test matches, we could call them test matches. We didn't have quite a number of test matches like we have to, uh, in this period. Emmanuel Okot then played different international teams and was eventually at one point in his career made national team captain in 1995 and won the cup against Porty Bull. This was the peak of his career, and eventually he had to make a tough call. As my retirement age uh, caught up with me, I now moved on towards coaching for my club side. First, Mwamba, and then Kenya. And I think thereafter, as I progressed on, my body couldn't take the beatings anymore. And, uh, and due to work pressure, I was forced not to retire. When names such as Humphrey Hayange, Collins Injera, and many other top-notch players are mentioned, few know that Emmanuel Okoth was the talent scout who nurtured them into the greats they are today. During the time, I think Ulysses wound up. The Ulysses rugby football team wound up, and we were fortunate to get some young players. But we are, I believe, we very young and talented players in the name of Collins Jera and Humphrey Kayange. They were very unknown at that time, but you could see the level of skills was quite high. And they had this very positive attitude to really play. And there's not a time they really, there's not a th time I can recall they ever miss the physical training. They, were really, they really put up quite a good effort to attain and complete the physical exercises. Need we say more? Emmanuel Okoth remains a name that will forever culminate in the minds of many he has touched. And in his parting shot, he tells us the changes that he has so far seen. During my years, 
Can I call my period? We played out of passion. It was basically sacrifice. So right now it is much, much more competitive and the players are, can I say, they are rightfully demanding because they are putting in a lot of their own personal effort into the game. And I must admit, I'm also trying to catch up with a new, can I call it, attitude. The game now is more headed towards semi-professionalism. A lot of players now are putting a lot of their uh, are sacrificing much more than we did in, in the game. A lot of their time is spent now towards uh, strengthening and conditioning, which takes up a lot of their time, and they expect something in return, compensate something in return. Welcome back to Scrum Don't Remind You once again. We'd like to hear all your comments on Twitter. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's fire. It's fire there. Uh, at Scrum Don't Rugby, also on Facebook. Send us those pictures that, uh, you know, you've taken while you're enjoying the games over the, uh, the weekend. Now, Manuel Okok, um, right now he's uh, at the coaching staff at Mwamba. He's actually, uh, he's actually my boss. He's actually <laughs> your boss right now. But, I mean, he's, he's, actually, he's actually a true rugby legend. He's one of the few players who managed to uh, cushion the pressure when uh, at the forwards, particularly playing together with uh, Mwangi Mude yeah. when Ken was playing uh, big teams like uh, Namibia. The, he was the go-to guy at a very tender age. Yeah. A, a lot of guys have, have talked uh, very fondly about Manu. Uh, uh, anyone I ask who played with him, First, of, first, uh, first and foremost, says he was a very good opponent on the pitch. Yes. But on top of that, they talk about how he he taught them the game. Uh, he taught the, uh, so, and, and I've seen that personally in my life. Manu coached me, mm -hmm. and uh, he's very big on development. I mean, uh, you do realize Mamba after I think uh, 2011 went through a slump. Yes, came up up a bit, and uh, again going through slumps and coming back up a bit. Uh, a lot had changed about how the development structures were happening in. Uh, when he came on board, and also I was brought back on board after uh, my haters at UK for two years, uh, the biggest focus has been on development, and that's one thing I can resonate with Moano. But uh, not taking away from what he used to do on the pitch as a seventh player, yes. mm -hmm. and also as a 15th player. Uh, another t another pool that we need to look at, um, I mean, uh, Mwamba, Kenya Harlequins, uh, everybody expect those two teams to go through, but don't write off uh, KCA and Catholic University. Catholic University actually pulled an upset against Mwamba. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I <think I'm laughs> but Mwamba have had time also uh, to, they, they to, to recoup. Now, uh, there's another interesting pool that is going to be uh, Nakuru and uh, playing Strathmore. That is a pool D. And there's also Kisumu in that pool. Kisumu, they want to break through. Yes. And of course, you see Nakuru, they want to maintain their position, but Strathmore want to dislodge them from third slot. So this is a very interesting. Uh, you cannot write off any team. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, if anyone goes into that tournament thinking that it's going to be business as usual, and uh, again, not minimizing the mistakes they do in every game and yeah. not having their mental up there, then they might suffer. Uh, we, we as Mwamba know that too well. We've, we've, <laughs> we've suffered that. On that note, uh, that's all we have time for this week on Scrum Down. Uh, just to remind you once again, you can engage us on Twitter at Scrum Down Rugby. We are on Facebook, Scrum Down. Uh, give us all your news, anything you want to see on the show, and we'll be bringing it to you. Now, we are leaving you with the Scrum Down fact of the week. And the Scrum Down fact of the week is that Driftwood marked the first loss for KCB in nearly two and a half seasons. Yeah. At the seventh impressive, level. Yeah. It's impressive run, but homeboys managed to break that record. So, I mean, uh, kudos to uh, homeboys, but uh, it's going to be a tough one. So, uh, don't worry, next week we're going to bring you all the action uh, from Prince Louis Sevens and uh, focusing on legends and player profiles. Go out and enjoy some rugby. And until next time, enjoy rugby to the maximum. Yeah.